So I will go over what are my different income streams, how much I've made from each of them, how much I made every single month, January, February, March. And also I'll talk about some of my biggest business expenses. Before I do that, I want to give you a little bit of context. So I have been self-employed for pretty much five years. I quit my job in 2019. I had a very normal like office corporate job and I quit that to do calligraphy. And calligraphy is obviously like not my main thing right now. And so throughout these five years, I just want you to know that I have pivoted a lot and I've tried a whole bunch of things in my business. It was also during the pandemic. So like I started teaching calligraphy work workshops. That was my full-time thing. Then during COVID, I couldn't really teach physical workshops anymore in person. So I switched to online workshops. And then I also started coaching calligraphers on how to start a business. That is also when I started this YouTube channel. And during the pandemic, I was trying to grow this YouTube channel. It didn't really work. It's so a kind of long story short, me in my current state of running my business, like the income streams that I have, all of this is kind of new for me. I would say it was only last year when I started having like these income streams because before I blew up on YouTube, I mean, I didn't get like super duper viral, but like my channel really, really grew. That was at the beginning of last year in 2023. And you can watch this video for more information if you want to know like how I bl blew up. But basically after my YouTube channel started to get bigger, that's when I felt like, wow, this is really, really what I want to do in my business in the long term, and I want to build all these income streams. So I just wanted to point out that the state of my business, how it is right now, it's very new for me. I didn't start doing brand deals until like mid last year. So all of this is very new for me. And I think it's very interesting. I also will give you an update on how my Etsy shop is doing. One other thing to mention is last year, I think I mentioned this in a couple of videos. I think I made about $60,000 Canadian from online income sources, but I have a couple other income streams. So maybe I made about 65,000, something like that last year. So it was like, okay, last year, remember this is revenue numbers, not expenses. Okay. Before last year, like from 2019 till 2022, my income has just kind of been okay. Like it's like nothing big. Um, I, I could get by. It was okay. This year, I'm really happy with where I am in my business. I did the whole digital nomad thing last year. And this year, I'm really intentionally trying to grow my income streams and to make more passive income, which I'll talk about more later. When we're looking at this, I just want to point out that all the numbers we're looking at, they've all been converted into Canadian dollars. So I make income in USD and Canadian dollars, and I've converted all the USD to Canadian dollars because I live in Canada and that's where I'm going to spend my money for my Canadian income sources, I am charging GST and HST. So these numbers do include GST, HST, which I will have to remit uh, when I do my taxes next year. And also all of this income that I'm showing you, this is revenue. Okay. This is not my profit. And I do have business expenses, which I'll talk about later. But remember, this is income. The money that I'm actually like taking home, it's not this money. This is just like business revenue. So my biggest income stream in the last three months was brand deals. I made about $11,000 and sorry for all these like nine, 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 nines. I think it's like when I was converting from USD to Canadian, uh, that happened. So $11,000, this was working with several brands and it has been amazing so far because I've always wanted to do brand deals. That's what I thought successful YouTube creators did. And now that I am here, I'm so happy. It's so amazing working with these companies and I get a lot of requests actually like every day I get emails from companies asking me if I want to do like a sponsored video or some kind of collaboration and so I reject like 99% of all the emails I only work with the companies where I truly truly I love the product I have used the product and I think it would be useful to you guys so I'm very picky with my brand deals and I know I could probably make more with brand deals if I wasn't as picky but I am super picky so with the brand Deals. Some of them were sponsored videos on my YouTube channel. Some of them were sponsored Instagram content. And then some of them were uh, UGC, which is user generated content. And to respect the agreements with the companies that I'm working with, I can't share how much I am charging, how much they paid me. So I can just tell you the total amount I've made is 11,000 from multiple contracts with multiple companies. On the topic of brand deals, one of the companies that I've been working with this year is moft you will not believe how many 
friends, I have showed my moffed products because like I honestly love the products so much. So I'm going to share with you two of my favorite things. The first thing that I love from moffed is this phone tripod stand. Okay. And you'll notice that I have an Android, right? So these work with uh, MagSafe on iPhone, but if you don't have an iPhone, Moft will give you a magnetic sticker. This tripod stand is really cool. You just stick it to your phone like that. It's magnetic. It's very, very sturdy. Like it's not gonna come down. So there is a like lower tripod stand. You can use it to hold your phone vertically or horizontally. You can also open up this bottom part so you can use it as a tripod. And I've used this outdoors to film myself running. And I also use it for a lot of other things like video calling, watching videos when I'm just eating a meal. The other product from Moth that I love a lot is this laptop carry sleeve. And you'll notice that I use this like every single day. All of Moth's products are origami inspired. So basically like they just kind of fold up into whatever shape. This is how it looks like as a laptop stand. There's a little tab right here where you can uh, hold your laptop. There are two angles that you can use this. So this is the 25 degree angle. And if I wanna do the 15 degree angle, it's gonna look like this. And then I can put my laptop on it. This is what it looks like as just the laptop sleeve. I do have a 10% coupon code if you want to get any of Moss products. So you can use Dina10 when you check out and I will leave the Moft website link in the description below. My second biggest income stream was YouTube AdSense and I made almost $7,000 Canadian with my YouTube AdSense. On average, I'm making about like a 1800 USD, I think something like that. Anyways, I'll put a screenshot of my analytics for my YouTube AdSense. This has been pretty consistent throughout the entire year this year and last year. It is actually going up um, right now. Like March was actually really, really good, but I don't get the March income from YouTube until April 25th. So my YouTube AdSense income that I received in January, February, and March, this was the money that I made in December, January, and February. If you're curious about my RPM, it has always been around 10 to $12. I think in March it was higher, like $12. My CPM has always been like 20 to 30-ish, I guess average of 25. Um, that is pretty high in terms of RPM and CPM numbers because of my niche, which is the business education niche. This is typically one of the higher paid niches on YouTube. So if you're starting like a fashion vlog or a cooking channel, like you're not going to have numbers as high as mine right now. The third one is Hangouts income. And you might be confused, like what the heck is Hangouts income? So I don't talk about this much. This is not one of my online income streams. Um, there is somebody in the community that I help. It's very popular part time, it's like a side gig that I do. So I get paid to be this person's company. Usually my hangouts income is not that high, but there was about two weeks where the guardians of this person went on vacation. So they needed extra help. Um, so that's why I got paid more. This is like not one of my online income streams, but it is an income stream that I have every single month. Usually it's not that high. The next one is affiliate income. And I made about 1900 with that. Usually my affiliate income isn't that high, but it was higher these three months because I was part of the Go Digital on Etsy summit, which I was a speaker at. And for people attending the summit online, it was completely free. Um, but if they did upgrade, then I would get a commission. So that is part of my affiliate income. I also am working with several companies. I'm an affiliate partner, so I make income from that. Most of it is from, if you look at my YouTube descriptions, like I have a lot of affiliate links there uh, to like companies that I use. Affiliate income is probably the most passive income that I have out of all these income streams. And I would really like my affiliate income to be higher. So I'm working on that, but you kind of need 
a big audience to make affiliate income. At least that's what I, I think for, for my business. Like I need an audience, like the more people who watch my videos, uh, the more people clicking, right? At the end of this video, I'm gonna share my plan for how I'm gonna increase this affiliate income and the income streams that I think are the best for me. So make sure you watch the whole video. Okay, the next one is Etsy income and I made 1400 from that. I have not really worked on my Etsy shop for I think maybe half a year. I kind of worked on it like, oh, well, just very, very minimal. So you'll see this is how my Etsy has been doing. January was pretty good. New Year's resolutions, people are starting businesses and I sell Canva templates for business owners. So January was good. And then it kind of just went back to what it is normally, which is like making about $300 per month, which is not that great. I want to work on my Etsy more. I don't feel like it's a priority right now just because it's not giving me a lot. And that is partly maybe my fault for not, you know, making the best products or maybe not having the best niche but for me right now it just it's not really worth my time right now if i did have more time i would work on it slash maybe start another etsy shop i will talk about that later in my plan the next one is course <laughs> The next one is course slash coaching income. And um, there are basically two things that I'm doing here. So I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching calls for people who need help with their business. And so two people booked a one-on-one -on -one call with me in the last three months and the rest of the money I made from selling my Etsy course. Now this course slash coaching income, I should probably like separate the two, but I, I just didn't feel like doing it this time. But what I really want to grow is the course income slash me selling digital products income. So that is something I'm going to work on, which I'll talk about later. The next one is calligraphy income. So about a thousand dollars, about half of it came from a project that I did in December. And then I just finally got paid in January. There was an on-site calligraphy event that I did. And then I also taught a private calligraphy workshop. So all those three things added up to a thousand dollars. So I know I mentioned at the beginning that when I quit my job in 2019, I wanted to do calligraphy full-time and I did do it full-time it's just like now like all the things that I've done in the past five years all of them like all these the income streams like the calligraphy and the coaching uh the etsy shop that i started they all kind of add together so it seems like right now i have like eight income streams or something but that was from five years of building this up and with calligraphy i don't really try to get calligraphy projects right now i just if people email me, if they want me to teach a workshop or they want me to do on-site calligraphy, like I'll do it. I just, I accept it when it comes my way. The next one is other income, which was $400. This is like not really business income. Let's see, it was some from buy me a coffee, like $5 from buy me a coffee, someone donated. Oh, by the way, if you're finding my content helpful, you can also donate to my buy me a coffee page if you want. The other one was cash back from me using my credit card. So, I mean, it's not, it's kind of income, but it's not like me working on my business income. And this also includes money that I got back from the Canadian government, uh, which includes like GST, HST credit that kind of stuff. So it's not really business income. And then the last one here, which is not really business income, but I still track it, it is gifts received income. So this is when people give me money. I did have my birthday in the last three months and some of the gifts were cash gifts. So that was also part of my income, but not really business income. The breakdown of how much I made was January. It was about 9,000, February 14,000, March almost 5,000. The total was um, 28,000. Remember this Canadian dollars and this is just revenue. My average per month was 9,400. And I would say that is pretty good. I'm very happy. I almost hit the $10,000 revenue goal that I have, 10,000 minimum goal. So I'm very happy it's just the beginning of the year i want you to take a look at this like the income is really up and down on average it's about nine thousand. but like you get a contract for something and they pay you like all at once either at the beginning or at the end and this is what happened in march where i got a huge payment from a company for several months of work in one lump sum payment so that's why the income is like that it's not so consistent it's really up and down because of these 
contracts. I want to quickly share some of the biggest expenses that I have because remember all these numbers that I'm sharing with you, these are all revenue numbers. And when you are running a business, you have business expenses. My biggest one so far, it was almost $5,000. So it was money that I had to pay for last year's taxes and the accountant fees to do the taxes. So I kind of lumped that into like accountant slash legal slash taxes money. Uh, that was about $5,000. And then the next biggest expense was subscriptions. Usually the subscriptions that I have there, I mean, they're all like software subscriptions. The, mo the one subscription that I paid a lot for in the last three months was Active Campaign, which is my email software. And it was $3,000 Canadian for the entire year. So I don't pay monthly. I usually, I pay monthly for a lot of different things like Canva or Loom or Mid Journey. Maybe I don't need Mid Journey that month, so I'll cancel it um, but my email list like I'm not gonna cancel it uh, next month you know so like I do pay for it yearly and you do get a discount so anyways that was the biggest one the three thousand dollars in total my subscription was four thousand dollars so the one thousand dollars that wasn't my email list big subscription payment that was from all the little software subscriptions I have I I think I have like 10 to 20 subscriptions the next one which is not really a business expense but it counts partially as a business expense that is stuff related to my car that was twenty five hundred dollars so that includes my monthly car payment my insurance for my car I had two parking tickets <laughs> kind of embarrassing and uh, this is also like paying for parking um, at parking lots and some EV charging stations. The next biggest expense was uh, $1,100. That was paid to contractors. So that includes um, a consultant that I hired, my video editor, my virtual assistant, and also my Etsy assistant. And they're all very like part-time. Those were the biggest expenses. I don't wanna go into detail on the other ones because I just feel like it's not that relevant, but I did wanna share with you what the biggest ones were. I know this is like a Google Sheets, but I actually use um, a money tracker called Lunch Money. It is a paid thing, um, but you can get a free trial of Lunch Money using my link below. It is an affiliate link, but I have been using Lunch Money since January to track everything. It links with your bank accounts, and this has been amazing for tracking my income, like both personal and business income, and also expenses as well. Okay, I didn't think this video would get that long, but I also want to share what I'm planning to do in the second quarter of the year. So I'll just really, really quickly go over it. So I'm planning some smaller digital products to sell and I really want this income to go higher. The uh, um, core slash coaching income, which also includes digital products, I guess. So this like is something that I can control. I can't really control YouTube AdSense. I can't really control brand deals all that much, but I can control the digital products that I sell myself. So that's something I really wanna focus. I am working on some digital products that are like very, very low priced. So we'll see how that goes. I'll give you an update. After three more months have passed, um, I'm gonna keep doing YouTube videos every two weeks. You'll know that last year I, I was doing it like once a week and the interesting thing is I actually make the same or more with less videos published which is really interesting like this whole year I've only been doing like two videos a month and my income from YouTube AdSense have pretty much stayed the same or it has been higher I'll keep doing brand deals my UGC strategy so I talked about my UGC strategy more in my other video about like my plan to make 10k a month I actually thought I would go for like some beauty companies and just some product companies. I changed my mind about that. I actually wanna go for more software companies. They have a bigger budget. Their user base is more limited, um, which means I can charge higher because I'm a user and I have, I'm subscribed to so many different kinds of softwares and platforms that I could work with all of these companies and make UGC content. So I'm not gonna focus on like product-based stuff anymore, like beauty products, you know, because a lot of people can make content about beauty, but not a lot of people compared to the people who use software there's 
you know, there's not a lot of people who use software. I think I actually do want to work more on my Etsy shop. I have really been neglecting it. Uh, I want to repackage my calligraphy business accelerator and calligraphy instructor academy, which were my old programs, which uh, I launched during COVID when I was helping calligraphers. I've kind of discontinued the calligraphy business accelerator because it was coaching program, but I can turn it into a course because I have so many videos that I made that I, I think they're still really, really helpful for calligraphers for growing my affiliate income. My master plan is to start repurposing my YouTube videos into blogs, which is going to take some time, but I think it's okay. I will use AI to do part of it. I think that will really help because then with my YouTube videos, most people find it through YouTube, but I want to repurpose them into blogs so that I can also get people who are searching for these topics on Google. So then they can find my content and then click on my affiliate links or buy my digital products. Okay, a new thing that I think I'm actually gonna start is a YouTube channel membership. You know those things, you know, beside the subscribe button, sometimes you see join, right? So basically you can join as a member of that YouTube creator's channel. So I think I might start doing that. You, you might actually see it like right now, but I'm not sure. Um, what I want to do is a, maybe an extra video once a month where I'm just talking about more personal things happening in my life because uh, I don't know. I just, I think it's interesting. I want to make videos on that. But whenever I talk about personal things I'm posted on this channel, it doesn't do well. So I just don't want to talk about personal things that I'm learning anymore. But maybe the people who really, really like following me are interested in my more personal things, not just business and making money. I hope you enjoyed my first ever income report. I feel very exposed. It is kind of nerve wracking sharing how much I make, but I think it's in the end, it is really useful. And I find it fascinating when I was like looking at other people's income reports. Let me know in the comments if you think I should continue doing these income reports. Mm -hmm.